The brain's pretty complex. 10,000 million neurons, each of which have 10,000 connections. Fantastic combinations. My love with the brain is really because of this complexity. And of course, ultimately, it's who we are. It's, it's what drives me, it, it what makes me think about the next question. Who we are, free will. We still don't really have a very good indication about what regulates many of those more metaphysical uh, components of the brain. I started my career studying dentistry. I, I finished dentistry, but I became increasingly more interested in, in research trying to understand fundamental mechanisms that regulated functions such as the brain and the immune system. I went to Johns Hopkins uh, University. From there, went to University College London, where I was infected with the neuroscience bug. And then I came back to the Hall Institute, set up a lab called Neuroimmunology, which combined neuroscience and immunology. In doing this, I also was imbued with the knowledge of stem cells, which came from, of course, Don Metcalf's group, who were leading the world in trying to work out how the stem cells in the blood system was regulated. So that naturally impacted on my sense of trying to look at the nervous system in terms of stem cells and how they might regulate development and ultimately whether they existed in the adult brain as well. It does look like it's probably from a... We were the first ones to really be able to grow the stem cell from the developing brain and showed unequivocally that there were populations of stem cells that could give rise to large numbers of neurons. So we thought, well, if they're real stem cells, they should be in the adult because one of the characteristics is that stem cells keep renewing, self-renewing, they should still be there. So we applied that technology and in 1992, in a paper published, we showed that there were stem cells in the adult brain as well. Well, the prevailing dogma until we published these findings was that uh, there was no capability of making any new nerve cells. It was all downhill for the adults. And also the prevailing dogma was that it didn't matter because the brain was hardwired and you couldn't change anything at any rate. So this finding really has overturned this whole sense of this static, immutable brain into one that we now have, which is this highly plastic brain that changes almost daily in response to environmental cues. The production of new nerve cells naturally slows down, and this is in ageing. And of course we know that ageing is the one thing that goes with increased dementia. One in three people over 85 have significant cognitive decline, if not dementia. Look at changes we're going to have to make measurements. Uh... We know now if we stimulate the production of new neurons in the hippocampus by exercise stimulates the production of new neurons and causes reversal of that cognitive decline. So an old animal that couldn't navigate a maze after exercise, the appropriate sweet spot exercise, is now able to navigate that maze as well as a, a very young animal. If it works, I think we're going to be able to roll out a way of monitoring what the correct exercise is in terms of stimulating the production of nerve cells. And how are you feeling now? Fine, thank you. We're going to see a dramatic change in cognitive decline in a, in a population of ageing people. And we're also going to see development of some of these molecules that we know regulates the exercise phenomena into a pharmaceutical reagent for people who exercise perhaps isn't appropriate or not enough. I'm extremely proud of what we've done here at the Queensland Brain Institute. Twelve years ago, when I came up from Melbourne, we were a small group of about 10 people. We're now 500 people. And I've had the privilege of being able to mould this institute into one of the leading institutes that studies fundamentally what regulates brain functions. Keep going, Richard. Don't let me stop you. Well, I'm, uh, I'm extremely honoured by the uh, CSL Flory Medal. I mean, Flory is an example to all of us. It's terrific to see the paper appear in, on the front cover of the journal. An example of what an Australian can do on the world stage. And I think there can be no other uh, greater model for any young medical biological scientist uh, to aspire to.